welcome to another edition of a talk show on the golfing hub uh, our topic of discussion this evening is uh, will uh, things change in the indian golf union after its december agm and talking to me uh, are mr jaydeep chitlangia a former <coughs> president of the indian golf union and mr arun kumar singh a former director general of the indian golf union uh, welcome uh, gentlemen to the show uh we'll start with you mr jidlangia uh, how do you see the uh, agm uh, what is your perception of uh, how things uh, went about uh thanks robin for having me on the show and for sharing my views um i am not uh, enamored i am not a big fan of what has happened uh unfortunately the rules of the game have been drastically been altered uh golf is a game which is self administered the rules is rarely that you have a referee unlike any other uh game uh, which is played within a enclosed environment in golf we uh, you know when you are playing on our own we call penalties on ourselves we do self regulation we manage ourselves um unfortunately i think uh, the indian golf union somewhere along the way has lost the path and they've gone stray and uh, it's rather unfortunate what's happened mr singh what do you uh, what do you feel uh, are you talking about uh, the agm specifically or you're talking about the state of affairs it of affairs and well agm i think mr chitlangia also said the same thing i also feel uh, with most of the with the coterie at work and uh, most of the familiar faces getting reelected it's basically old wine in new bottle uh, what do you feel uh, i i think uh, there are few things which have changed the way you know like i think when we met the last time i had said that they, you can criticize of ig of olden days for many things but there was certain amount of transparency within that unfortunately the transparency within has also vanished and there is a lot of opacity all around and i think in last two or three years for whatever reason it may be people who wanted to hold positions seem to have made it a issue of personal prestige personal valor personal bravery that they have to somehow get it around uh, this particular thing and i think uh, where uh, i would like everyone to introspect I, i think people who are in power or people who are running igu would be introspect is what do they want igu to be do they want it to be a, a development body do they want it to look after amateur golf do they want it to be a decorative national sports federation without having to do much for the promotion of game i think that is the more important question uh, this uh, chairs will come and go people will come and go someone will win election someone will lose elections and i think uh, on the face of it uh, legality aside after all they had a former judge of delhi high court as a returning officer who has given certain uh, judgments and uh, just to clarify just because he is a judge of the former uh, former judge of delhi high court does not mean that it is not prone to judicial review the everything is prone to judicial review he has given a ruling as per a template which was provided to him by people who gave him that template for example he has not uh, he himself has said that he is not uh, delved into the uh, into the whole process of the state golf associations because that was what was provided to him mm-hmm. and i think there is clearly some conflict of interest there so i think uh, in the spirit of things you know when you don't take people along in a game of golf which is small in any case you are going to face certain amount of problems sooner or later mm. whether they are legal whether they are not legal whether they are administrative or whether they are not that is something else but you are not going to function very very well if you do not take the entire community along that's what my view is right mr jitlangia uh, having uh, been a part of uh, igu for a while as its uh, president i'm very curious to know what is there so special about the chair of the president that the current uh, incumbent incumbent was so desperate to get reelected didn't get nominated from delhi had to go to jnk and finally uh, he uh, got saved 
So, I mean, this is something beyond my comprehension. Robin, that answer only the, the incumbent president can give you. I am not in a position to state yes, why. Yes, yes, I understand. Okay. Because I know why I became the president. I know why I was on the council. I can speak for myself. I cannot speak for anybody else. I worked under the leadership of General J.J. Singh. I worked under the leadership of General Bikram Singh, both chief of the army. Uh, and I did hold both of, I held both of them in high esteem. Uh, they, for one, never allowed the rules to be altered or broken or be, we had to play by the rule book. We were never allowed under any circumstances to bend the rules to suit our, uh, not that we wanted to do it. Uh, being on the council of the Indian Golf Union left me a couple of lakhs poorer. I won't say crores, but a couple of lakhs. Uh, my wallet was lighter. Uh, because we had to spend all our own personal money to attend council meetings. We didn't get support from the council or from IGU. Uh, we never, so it, it beats me why, uh, actually, like I said, it's for the current incumbent to answer what was so sacrosanct and so special to hold on. It's perfectly fine to get elected, but not follow the rules. That's what hurts. No, exactly, because we all know these are honorary positions. I mean, if if something is not working out, make way for someone who probably might be in a position to do something uh, concrete. No, that's not the issue here. The issue is something different. Uh, maybe General Anbu uh, has it in him to deliver what the IG requires him to deliver as a president. So I don't think we can be uh, judgmental on that at this point of time. The process with which has happened, the urgency with which rules have been broken, you know, uh, whether you go to the Societies Act, which uh, the West Bengal Societies Act under which the Indian Golf Union is, is registered, whether you go by the uh, articles of the Indian Golf Union, the business to be conducted at an annual general meeting is very well defined. Mm. It's rather unfortunate that for the last four years, we've not had an AGM. They've not, they've not conducted the business as per the rule. And multiple government agencies are who are supposed to be uh, the protectors of the law in this country have turned a blind eye to these uh, shortcomings and uh, they haven't taken action against them. Mr. Singh, what do you feel about this? See, I, I'll uh, uh, again expand being, what... Being an uh, uh, honorable ex-serviceman yourself. Oh, I'm very proud of being an ex-serviceman. But at the same time, like I have said this earlier too, uh, Air Chief Marshal Tipness and uh, later on even Air Chief Marshal Dhanwa, they were very, very clear that our mandate was entirely different and we were not here to uh, run the sports for the country. They were very clear. But uh, be that it may be, that was the opinion of two very, very honorable air chiefs. But, but others, others may have their own opinions. But I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about the organization as such, organization per se. Indian Golf Union, for whatever it was, it, was, it had certain amount of respect about it in the society. It was less political. You, you could have criticized it for being an old boys club. You could have criticized it for being a metro centric. You could have criticized it for many other things, but you could not have criticized it for not following the rules. You could not have criticized it for, you know, uh, trying to bulldoze things and trying to do things which other national sports federations are famous, well known for. Now, when you're talking about this particular AGM, I think what you're alluding to is uh, the unholy haste with which people have wanted to change goalposts every day or every week. And I come back to my former, uh, former premise that IGU in the current form has to decide what do they want to be. Because in 1955, the state of golf was different. Uh, Jadeep uh, is from the Royal Calcutta himself. And I said, say this again, that if Royal Calcutta, Mr. A.D. Vickers and Mr. James Asplund 
etc were not interested in giving power to a wider range of clubs in india probably for many more years royal calcutta would have been the governing body of golf in india for many more years at least and uh, if you remember for uh, national sports court is of recent vintage indian golf union remained the premier body of golf not only for amateur for also for professional body it also did a lot of growth of golf for many many years without having the need to have this recognition of national sports code etc etc now what has happened is whatever little time i have spent in indian golf union some of the people are present i mean there's there are people uh, you know arundhati roy wrote uh, god god of small things so we have many god of small things there and i am privy to two pers- two uh, meetings of the council in which one of the very valuable council members who is also very central now uh, to this whole uh, political uh, game categorically said we have nothing to do with government of india government of india can do whatever they feel like i in fact i was the one who was opposing it and what has caused this change of heart that suddenly sports court and adherence to sports court and being a national sports federation is the most important thing why is it that uh, promoting the game of golf is no, not important to you you can still be a member of rna and need not be an nsf exactly is that is what i was coming to that is what i was coming to why this fixation and, to be declared a nsf yeah and the second thing is for example when you see the new rules uh, it's again a legacy from the old thing you know because i think we are not able to delineate from the old indian golf union which was essentially a union of golf clubs now you want state golf associations if you read the new rules it still says clubs are members so mm. if clubs are members are they supposed to vote they are not supposed to vote what are they supposed to do why are they members if they if they don't have any 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 say in this and then you force state associations to take golf clubs who are your members only to be to be your members you know mm. they only so it's it's quite a quite a circular thing and then uh, when you come to state associations themselves now new information uh, has emerged that at least four or five of them were not even registered or at least igu is not aware of the registration details of those those associations mm. one of them is jnk mm. indian golf union is not aware of the registration details of jammu and kashmir golf association so how did they uh, affiliate it and how did someone become uh, an office bearer by by, nom- by by getting nominated from an illegal uh, state golf association so there are too many questions being asked and i think uh, jaydeep uh, is pre- is president of west bengal golf society so he'll know better but i happen to see because i was nominated by some people to go for the scrutiny of indian golf union uh, elections and i had a brief i mean i had to represent those people the bengal golf association which is the affiliated body of indian golf union now in its constitution does not have a category of golf clubs as being its members so how does it qualify when you are uh, when you are so there are two i think in this hurry to become national sports federation in trying to get the recognition from the government they forgot to get their house in order and they forgot to have patience they forgot to introspect that what their rules uh, what their role should be that, that's uh, uh, I, i i think jaydeep can add something more right uh, uh, mr chitwani please feel uh, free to add to this uh, west bengal golf society versus uh, the indian golf union it's not west you know this all emanates from the egm of 6th of july 20 Uh, 18. 18 and where a lot of things the 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 manner in which the egm was conducted the manner in which the uh, members were treated uh, there's a lot more depth and lot more uh, pain uh, because of certain dealings the way things happened and we haven't been able to uh, come out of that and actually uh, we are still fighting a case the west bengal golf society is still in a case with uh, the indian golf union uh, the high court is on the verge of appointing an arbitrator because we have established that there is a dispute mm. and so the and there is a dispute resolution in the uh, uh, articles 
uh, a methodology that if there's a dispute, there is a way of doing it. So we had no other option but to go for that route and uh, the High Court, while they allowed the AGM to be conducted, they, it did not talk about the elections to be conducted. They, the order was very, very clear that the, the IGU is free to conduct its AGM. Um, I fail to understand why the current uh, office bearers of the Indian Golf Union did not think it important enough to conduct the AGM by the rules. Why was it only conducted for the elections? Just to get their recognition. Mm. There are about 45 or 47 uh, NSFs, National Sports Federations, who have lost their recognition, but they continue to be recognized by the government of India on a temporary basis, on an annual basis, on a time period basis. Mm. Anyway, every NSF is recognized by the government of India on a time basis. It is not a permanent, it's a renewable recognition, whether it's one year, two years, three years, whatever be the rules. But you have to get yourself re your affiliation renewed year on year. So there's nothing very different from what's happening. And for the last four years, they've been doing that. Why? What was the hurry? What was the need to conduct the uh, AGM without passing of accounts, without appointment of all, without going through the full business as is required? And like uh, my co-panelists mentioned, uh, there are gross uh, errors, omissions in the way associations have been given, uh, state associations have been given uh, uh, recognition. If you see uh, one person fights an election in a particular NSF from uh, X state, the same person fights elections in a B federation from Y state. So mm. what is the sanctity of this? So are you supposed to be a resident of that country, st city? Where are you supposed to be? A number of the state associations have a care of APO address. Mm. Now, if anybody knows, is aware of what an APO is, is the army post office is just a postal address for letters to be delivered to the forward posts of the uh, armed forces. Mm. How can an association be registered at an army office, at the personal residence of an army officer, a serving army officer? There is, it's just, uh, I think the less I speak about it, the better it is. Okay. Taking it forward, uh, gentlemen, I'm assuming there are a lot of people who would want that things are set right within the IGU. But why is it that most, I think almost all the uh, people who got uh, re-elected uh, uh, did so unopposed? Why is it that nobody kind of uh, took the call to at least, you know, uh, uh, make it a contest? Is it because everybody is kind of, you know, they've given up They've uh, <laughs> Robin, it was more like fate accompli. It was a one-sided battle. Enough, there was a enough. chain of command. It was a one-sided battle. It's very simple. A lot of people approached me. Hmm. They said, it's not me. I cannot do it. Yes, IG wants my services. I'm happy to provide it on a positive note. Mm. But why would I, I? I left the IGU as a president with my uh, head held high. Uh, with very, uh, you were a part of the uh, uh, mainstream media at that point of time, and uh, you are aware of uh, the way the IGU was conducting itself. You were, we always had people from the mainstream media trying to take pot shots at us. But we were able to get out of that of those uh, evade them with our head held high. Yeah? We didn't have to, you know, unlike what's happening today, we are just trying to. But having said all this, uh, I think uh, I do hope that the current uh, office bearers and the current council is able to resolve all those issues and take IGU back on, bring it back on track and take it where it where it's supposed to be. 
Mr. Jitlangya, now that you said that the High Court is on the verge of appointing an arbitrator, is there still room for dialogue to ensure that uh, there's a speedy resolution of uh, the dispute between the West Bengal Golf Society and IGU? Uh, dialogue is always good. But then dialogue is only good if both parties want a resolution. To hmm. put on record, I have met General Anbu two times and taken my points forward. These are the way for this is the way forward. Let's resolve our disputes. Let's resolve the way and let's move ahead. There's no point in this angling. Mm. There's no point fighting a battle. Let's sit down and discuss and move forward. Uh, you will hear like every coin has two, two sides to a coin. Uh, hear another story when you speak to him. You'll hear one story from me. And maybe he's right in the way he's thinking. Maybe I'm right in the way I'm thinking. Uh, what was missing, maybe uh, someone, an arbitrator or a common good faith healer who would have shown both of us a way out of the, the, out of the imbroglio and come out with a solution. Unfortunately, we both sat on, you know, with a, uh, we both, I was happy taking all their uh, suggestions and moving ahead, except for one. And then, and I accepted nine out of 10. On the 10th one, they said, this is non-negotiable. Non so how do you move ahead in that case? There are 10 issues you've listed out. I say nine are acceptable to me. This is my one position. This is one thing that we need. Uh, we would request you to accept. He said, no, we will not accept this. So, no, I will give you one, and you will how do you fight? And look at the other side. West Bengal Golf Society is fighting in Tata High Court, spending our own money. IGU is spending public money. Money which has been saved through various in initiatives, surpluses which, have been, which should be used for the promotion of golf. If you see the balance sheet, I think they spent a considerable amount of money on uh, fighting uh, the legal battles. And to what expect? It's been amazing. Uh, the uh, JAX, which is the Judicial Armed Corps, is fighting the case in the Karta High Court. IG is represented by JAX. No, not a single office bearer has of the IGU has ever visited Calcutta. Neither the DG nor an office bearer to stand in court and make and and brief the lawyers. And here is it, it's always been us who've gone ahead and done all this. So anyway, past is past. Yeah, there's no point talking about it. Mm. No, oh, but as you, yeah, let's look at the future. Yeah, I know. No, as you said, uh, Mr. Jitlangya, that uh, there are two sides of of a coin. But the problem is if I uh, if uh, IGU is to be approached and uh, for their version of uh, this uh, uh, the impasse uh, with the West Bengal Golf Society, they'll never uh, come out with their version because there is no transparency, as Mr. Singh said. And coming uh, to course, I think uh, in February 2018, uh, I'd done a story where their legal expenses had crossed one crore. So we are now almost two years down. So you can imagine uh, the amount of money that's been uh, spent on fighting cases. Uh, uh, Mr. Singh, I'll get back to you. Uh, if you're looking at it, it's a new year and uh, we are all uh, hopeful that it will be a better year. So how do you see things panning out after the AGM? How do you think or how do you think they're going to uh, take it forward? See, I think uh, since uh, the whole focus has been to get the government recognition back, and for a, I, I don't understand the reasons for the hurry, but notwithstanding that, that it's very, very clear that to them it mattered. The government recognition was of foremost importance. So I think after the elections, they would they would go back to the government and said, look, we have got, we have done our elections, we have got elected our office bearer, so renew our the thing. Mm. Not that that probably they will be granted. Uh, I think the uh, uh, Ministry of Sports has been uh, reasonably soft with Indian Golf Union. That's what Advocate Rahul Mehra said in Delhi High Court. Mm. So, so I think uh, they have been relatively soft with some, and also with the Equestrian Federation of India, which is again in another mess, another particular mess. 
So after the recognition or will will be granted, I think the real work will start. Mm. And some of the things are routine. I mean, doing tournaments, they have gone on uh, all through these three or four years, whatever they recognize, they were not recognized. Government funding has never been stopped. So as far as the tournament play is concerned, we'll continue going on. What is of importance is what, what we should be concerned about and what we should be viewing is what will happen to get the whole small fraternity of golf together, have certain amount of cohesion, and should we see, see something new, uh, something new happening, something new and better happening? Time will tell. I I, I don't have uh, any you know clear points on that, but my guess is there is one thing which has changed. I mean, in the old, good old days when the Indian Golf Union was a union of uh, golf clubs. And when we had the zonal system of getting presidents and, uh, and uh, council, etc., while it may have been restricted to a small group, but it had a great advantage that people worked their way up from the bottom. Now, if you see the list of office bearers in the new Indian Golf Union, majority of the people have been parachuted down. I mean, they have ne- they have no experience of sports administration. They have great careers of the, their own, but mm-hmm. sports administration is not there strong suit. So I think they will take some time to learn or maybe they will uh, take some time to unlearn. So that is one challenge which I see. Second challenge which I see is uh, how do you get the f- uh, get the confidence back in the system that you have certain amount of rule of law. When you have the state association which are clearly made only for the purpose of recognition, only for the purpose of convincing the government Mm. And and government also, you must understand, has got its own hands full. There are 50, 60, uh, you know, sports uh, federations. They are very limited staff in their offices. Those people who are in the staff, they don't understand the nuances of the game, of every game. So they are also hard-pressed. So they sometimes would like to get over with it and, you know, say, okay, fine, you, you go ahead and do whatever you have to do. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, do you get the confidence back in the system or not? And how do you get the players' council when your rules say the professionals will not be there? And if you take the athletes' commission, which the International Olympic Committee mandates, it is supposed to be elected from people of recent vintage, you know, champions of recent vintage. People of recent vintage are all professional golfers. And if your rule says, that professionals are not allowed, then end with national sports code in a shortest possible time. So, so this challenge, to my mind, will remain. Right, Mr. Jitlangia, how do you see the road ahead for the Indian Golf Union? I don't think I'm in a position to comment unless we see some proactive action being taken by the current council to set the house in order in terms of the rules and regulations, following of the rules. Uh, what they've done is just done an AGM to elect the office bearers, but there's a lot more work to be done. Uh, there's a lot more healing to be done. Uh, Karnataka, there's no representation, and Karnataka per, per se has the highest number of golf courses in this mm. country, and they don't have a representation on, on IGU. They don't have an affiliated state association. Uh, Tamil Nadu is fighting a battle in Delhi High Court on recognition, who, which is the, this thing. Uh, West Bengal, we are fighting a case, and West Bengal has the oldest golf course outside the uh, uh, British Isles, uh, and the second second oldest golf course in the world, and the oldest outside the British Isles. Uh, we have a long history. Uh, so, under these circumstances, how, let's see what action the current uh, office bearers take to try and uh, mitigate the pains and bring everybody on board and become a cohesive body. Robin, I'll just come in and add something to what I had said earlier. Yeah, yeah, sure. Please go ahead. See, the, what I think uh, Mr. Chitlangia had said about uh, discussions. Without discussions and without conciliation, without uh, you know the, a policy of give and take, no sports federation will survive in India. Courts of law are burdened by a lot of work. Uh, there are limitations of understanding of sports laws. So you can only have temporary victories. If you really want to go ahead, I would recommend that there's a book by Doris Goodwin, uh, 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 which was about uh, a team of rivals. 
how Abraham Lincoln made his made his cabinet. But I, I like to say a team of diversity is what, what I, IU needs. It does not need yes men. It does not need uh, to tell people that you, you are the greatest. It needs diverse opinion. It needs diversity. It needs to talk to people. It needs to get everyone on board. It, like I'm repeating, it's a very small sport in India. If you really want to go ahead, you got to take everyone on board. And courts of laws are a measure of desperation. They are not a measure of, uh, you know, consolation. Mr. Jitlangya, are you hope hopeful for now that uh, IGU is kind of uh, held its AGM? I think that was what they were always aspiring for, that they're going to uh, reach out to you and uh, say, okay, let's sit down uh, on the negotiating table once again and sort this out. I don't know whether they're going to come and offer me a negotiation. <laughs> but I am sure they will be reaching out to me. Okay. Anything else? That's we are running my... out of time, gentlemen. Uh, sorry. Huh. Please carry on. That's my take because that's the kind of feel I've got. Mm. Uh, I've I've received some messages uh, from current office bearers that they would like to come and uh, sit with me and discuss with me. Uh, I don't know what they will offer to us. Um, I don't think there's much they can offer. At best, they can offer me is that you, West Bengal also said, we will give them recognition. But that's not the end of the story. That's only a small part of the story. The question is, how are we going to manage the game? Mm. So, I'm not it's just, it's not so simple. And there's too much water which has uh, flown, un uh, flown under the bridge. That uh, it, it's, let's see, it all depends on what is the action that they take to revive the game of golf and bring back the bonhomie uh, into the working of the Indian Golf Union. I think that is very important. I think that has gone out. That somehow, you yes, know, these years I of think what Mr. Ch And what Mr. Chitlangia is saying, you, I think one, one should consider that a lot of water has flown under the bridge. There were a lot of opportunity of consolation which has been missed. So after a long gap of time and after you have achieved your short-term goals or short-term aim mm -hmm. and you come for a conciliation and, uh, or uh, you know, for a conferencing or to, to talk to each other, you'll be always seen with a little bit of distrust. So for, for, and, it, and it is for the people who rule to remove that distrust. It is mm -hmm. not for people who have, who have been oppressed for, to start trusting. So I think there is a lot of effort, and if it, effort is made in the right direction with a clean heart, probably there's a good good possibility of a conciliation. But if it comes to what uh, Mr. Chitlangia was saying that no, there is X is non-negotiable, and let's uh, negotiate Y. That's no negotiation then. Negotiation has to be open-ended. It has to be done with a uh, certain amount of feeling for justice, and it's a, with with good intentions. Right. Well, gentlemen, here is hoping that things do look up, and uh, if they do, it's the sports that it's the sport uh, that's going to uh, benefit. Thank you uh, for taking time out and talking to me. Uh, have a good day. No, they will. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin, for inviting me, and have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Thank, thank you, Robin. Thank you. And I can say this again: they will definitely become better. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. That happens. Thank you.